Hey guys, I feel absolutely blessed to have been taken on a field trip into the Superstition Mountains by the cast, some of the cast of the Legends of the Superstition crew. Wayne Tuttle, Frank Augustine, and Woody Wampler. And then with them, Salvador Delgadillo. You know, these guys have spent thousands and thousands of hours in research and exploration. And for to have somebody like them take me around and show me what they know, what they learned, the history of the superstitions, has absolutely been priceless to me. So I hope you like this video. But before we get into it, first, do me a favor, mash that like button. I don't know if it helps me with YouTube or not, but it sure makes me feel better. And with that said, here we go. Now I'll tell you what, Terry, they've dug this place. I mean, if you start looking around, you'll see where you can tell they've just they've placed dug, dug all over the place. Because Bob Ward buried stuff. He was known to bury jars of coins, things he found. He would leave, um, he'd leave notes, buried four rifles yesterday. Really? So he buried guns because he lived in this cabin in the middle of nowhere. Anybody could break in and steal his stuff. So he'd hide so it, he buried stash it. and hid it out here and... People have always been digging everything up because they know it's not a worth, well, who knows what it's worth, you know? You right. don't know what he had, so. But any gold he found, he buried out here. Any coins and change he had, money, he buried out here. Rifles, guns he didn't have with him, he buried out here. Mm. So, it's always interesting looking around. So, he, this guy was on the claim with Tom? Tom, yeah, Tom had a claim out here. He had this, whatever those guys are up there at called the staircase mine there's a a mine that it's collapsing now but um it has a staircase going opening in it not to be confused with the spiral staircase but it's called the staircase mine so why did tom have him out here to be a caretaker of to watch to make sure nobody was messing with the claim okay this was the de cook claim in the de cook cabin and tom and them came took the claim over later and when they came into the claim Bob had been divorced, I think, and since he was displaced and didn't have a, they said, hey, we'll, we'll bring you out food and stuff if you'll stay out here and kind of watch out for everything. And Bob was known as being kind of one of those guys people didn't mess with, so he was a perfect guy to install on. What was that up there? Do you see it? See it, Terry? Follow my finger. Well, see right there? In the cliffs, or? It's, there's a little flat spot, and you can see where oh, yeah, shine yeah. and see it? Yep, I can. See it, Britt? It's below this point. There's that point. Just start falling down below, and you'll see two shiny objects side that by side. Looks like that could be a little bit of a tailings pile, maybe there, it's right there. Tailings. That's metal. Is it's metal or glass? Well, that, yeah, that's or one of them them balloons. But I mean, that that area could looks like it possibly could be a little bit of tailings right there. Balloons. Sometimes you see them move because they they kind of shift with the breeze. Yeah. You always see that little kind of like winking or like you yep. think it's a person. Yep. Because it's a little movement to it. This isn't moving. It looks a little flat, dirt. Like I said, and that's the stuff out here you look for. You know, you come Just out and then you note some natural, spots, you go yeah. back, you kind of mark them out. And then you come back on another trip and you go out there and look for that one. And then you see something on the other side. Because you never know when you're going to find that box of rifles or a jar of coins. And it, that's the cool part to me. So, so also, it's not, it's not always the value of something. It's actually finding something yeah. at the end of the trail. So I've been in areas for years and haven't noticed things and then all of a sudden I notice it and why it took me years to notice it you know so you're always well, like you looks, say when you're looking at the spot you can kind of see a game trail that goes off to the left on a, on a yep diagonal. going up yep and then it goes another it takes the angle back and it goes up into that cleft in the yep. rocks yep so it's hard to say it could have been someone years ago was working up there and they were staying up in those rocks above the claim which is pretty common those guys like to stay above that claim where they'd be uphill of it when they weren't working it and if someone came into the area they'd be uphill which is classic you know why don't you yep. downhill like the guy yeah have the higher ground it's still a nice place I, I, regardless of everything else that went on out here just imagine just living here yeah yeah salvador has stories because he worked and knew most everybody how the so hell do you live out here? I mean, you have to hunt and stuff, or what? No, they, they go into town, they make some money, and they do some odd jobs. They'll pack people in, they'll do... And that's what Sal was. Sal was that guy that just went from guy to guy. Whoever needed something, I'll hire you for 100 bucks. You dig over here. Okay. 
So Tom, maybe Tom and them needed someone to dig something out. And they told Bob, here, you know, here's a couple hundred bucks we need to dig. Bob's too lazy. He's got his food and stuff. So he get oh, Sal, I need you to dig this hole out for a hundred bucks. Yeah. So Bob made a hundred bucks. He gives Sal a hundred bucks. Sal digs the hole. And Sal was the guy that, with everybody, if you notice, he always went to work for all these different people. For all these, that was it. He was always that all guy. All these treasure hunters hired him. Hole. Sal's reliable. He'll show up. He'll go. Sal spent a week in the mountains. So I think that was Sal's role so often. Because he was, there was feuds and a lot of problems between, say, Chuck Crawford and Bob Ward and different groups. Sal worked with all of them. With all of them. Which huh. is why I think he ended up in that confrontation in the cabin when Bob was thinking about killing him. Because I think at that point, he was thinking Sal's talking, and that was a big deal. Most of the guys they shot, we believe they killed, was because they felt they were telling the other side about stuff. I think Sal got caught in that moment and got lucky. He got out of it. So how did they not? Otherwise, Sal would be out here some buried somewhere, and we wouldn't know. Because he's a perfect guy, too, Sal. Sal comes up missing, everybody's just gonna go, what happened to Sal, remember Sal? Right. Yeah, he came from, he just disappeared. That's the guys they took care of. So, and there's no, I guess, law enforcement anywhere near here. No, nah, no, nah, it's a long ways out. But you never know what you might find sticking up out of the ground out here, or in a bush. Because these guys would drink, get drunk, drop trash. And you know, hey, I always look at it this way: one guy's trash might be your treasure. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, they have the Forest Service and the BLM has pack it in, pack it out. But you look at the things that people are finding today and calling treasures. It's stuff's from the late 1800s, the early 1900s. They find old Prince Albert can and all, and people think, wow, that's cool. Right. You know? know? Eric Magnus was a perfect individual. As you walked behind him, you'd find his hat in the bush. Something yeah, fell off so. his pack. Uh, oh, yeah? And we always say, whenever you have a group of people working somewhere, it falls off of people. And that's that's a very real thing. So when you find an old trail, something, you should always be looking off the side because whenever they stop, they took a break. somebody left something behind. Yeah. You know, and they left a canteen. So that's how guys find stuff. It's just in Arizona, out in the desert, people always think like back east. It's so much often it's surface. Mm -hmm. I mean, arrowheads. You get a good rainstorm, you'll find arrowheads and pottery because it all stays close to the surface. If it's underground, a foot six inches someone buried it so that's the nice thing of being out here you'll always know and especially this year with all the rainstorms it's a great year to go out and kind of look because everything got washed out a little bit more and you never know what might get uncovered where you might see a depression and something like that 22 inches main door in the corner there and then the back door was right there NBC one time they filmed him here and they paid him 700 dollars to film him for a few minutes that was it Lots of money back then. Back in the 80s, $700 to film you for a couple hours, it was a lot of money. So this is where the cabin was right yeah. here? It was floating. You see, this is the base, the base for the pillars. This is one of them. The cabin was right here. Bob used to shoot right out there, right? He shoot you through the window or anything? You shoot through the window and shoot the bottles. Shoot. Throw the bottles well, out across the gosh. Yeah, and, 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 it was a small cabin, you know, it was really nice. You, you go back to the trudies when when uh, when the ranchers uh, used to use it for an uh, inland cabin. Yeah, it was a line cabin. Inland the, cabin. The cook was in it, right? Well, he got killed here. Yeah, the cook died here. Who was the other guy that got shot here? No, you, you, you're thinking of a trapper on the, on the other side of the... Oh, the other one? Yeah, okay, trapper in the other cabin. So the cook got shot here. Yeah, here. He died so, here. Shot so why, here. why'd he get shot? Well, that's a long story. I can't so even tell. Sal doesn't want to tell the... Which version you want to tell? Well, the version is that... I want the, the TV version. The TV version... Well, the Hollywood <laughs> version is that he shot himself. Okay. And he changed his mind. And then he tried to walk out of the door to look for help. When you... Yes, you can see. If you get shot in the arm, you're going to have a hard time walking out of here. If you get shot through here and come out through here, how far are you going to go? Yeah, You'll be, you be lucky to make it to the door. But anyway, when I come here, the blood was uh, was bad dripping all the way to the door. He got shot up there. It was a hole in the ceiling, and the blood dripped all the way to the door. <coughs> so you came here right after it happened? Two weeks after it happened. You found him then? No, he was already been buried and everything, but you can smell the stink at the Oh, yeah. yeah you, two weeks later, you can smell the stink. And that was terrible. Like that. That's a history behind this cabin. Is this the cabin where Bob sat with you was going to kill you? Yeah, right here. He was yeah. sitting in that car, on that, that, that wall, and I was sitting over here. Yeah. The 
I think for a park. That close, that close. Hey, How is there a Maybe that close. Street? It was here. It don't matter for the goals. It was that close. It don't matter for the goals. It kind of sat out this way. Yeah. And, uh, and it sat. You can see the foundation ends here where they had it built up. Oh, and it wow. sat out. You looked out over here. Yeah. You'd throw the bottles out across the wash. And then he'd sit here and just shoot at them. If you look around and look at the cactus, you'll see that they shot everything up out here. He was yeah. a good shot too. He on me. So, so this cabin was still standing here in the 80s, and it's yeah until it got torn down by us. We tore it down. The the museum. You can ask Greg, but the museum tore the building down, and I think they used the material from the building because there's photographs of them when they tore the building oh. down. Oh. So I think they took it and at the museum, like the barn and stuff, where they needed old wood to build outbuildings, yeah. they used the wood from this. So they were going to tear it down. They allowed them to come in with a trailer and haul all the wood out. Yeah, that was a nice cabin it. with a real So they were able to preserve it. From the it. all the way from the So, Sal, if Bob would have popped you over here, he would have shot you, where would have he buried you? It's a, it's a couple of shots over there. A couple what? A couple, a couple shots, shots over, over there. there. And a couple of shafts are all around here, so... Yeah. So he just dumped people in the shafts? Yeah, and that's what... Wow. Yeah, that's How what, did he get away with all that? Hey. Who's going to check? No evidence. Nobody knows who, who they were. You know, yeah. You know, there back you in those days, there was no cell phone, no nothing. So you disappear, you disappear. Right. Yeah. Sal so comes out, that guy's gone. He don't know what happened to him. Yeah. So, do you want to tell or you you already got this on film or something you want to tell why he was mad at you why he you oh, thought he was going to shoot you or? the reason he was actually mad at me because he said i talked too much and i said bob knowledge would mean to be chair you know he he was very prepared about his life and he don't want people to don't photograph you know actually not no not uh, no book about the mountain was right until you know yeah 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 carson you know carson what's his name who the guy who did uh, hiking through the superstition mountain. Jack Carlson. Uh, Jack, Jack Carlson. Carlson. He was upset. Uh, if, if I would on that, he would really kill me because he, he said that if, if you need a, a book, a guy book to, to, to take you to the mountain, you don't to live. That was his philosophy. And I said, thank God I learned how to hike before I met you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was uh, funny about steam, but he, and I understand why he, why he wanted to do that. He don't want to turn the superstition mountains into city park. Right. It, it, he said, you want to see the park, go to Mesa. Go to Mesa. And so he was the uh, old school, and that's why. You know, he, he figured you don't know where the water was at. Hey, it's your problem. So I got, you want to I, got I got, a real quick question. Yes. So was this cabin already here, or did Bob Ward no, no. build it? No, it was here since the 30s. Yeah, since so the, the 30s. 30s. So he yeah. found it and kind of refixed no, it up. No. And Tom Collinborn and some guys got the staircase claim and they needed someone out here to watch the property so they built it. Bob I think was getting divorced wasn't he yeah let's and he didn't have that. a place to stay mm -hmm. so they made a deal with him we'll put you up out here while we're working that claim that gives me us someone to watch the claims while he, we he were was out like there a watchman. yeah so he was like the watchdog at first Ah, okay and then they let the claims go but Bob was still out here and he got he got killed because they needed this is a BLM land and and and, and they wanted to the build land so they can uh, uh, trade it for something else. Uh, uh, five or three, he, he, he died in vain. He died in vain, you know. That's, they kill him for nothing. Huh? He's a spider, treasure hunting. You know, you treasure hunt, sooner or later they're going to find you dead one way or the other. Yeah, that, he... The long story, Hensley. Dan Hensley, that was his. I know him, but Dan had nothing else. I don't know. So is that who you was working for him when you lived there? Uh, he was he, he he was in charge of the money claims. Bob Ward he was his bodyguard and uh, contractor. So, uh -huh. so when he wanted something done, he asked Bob Ward to to get it done. And he's the guy that paid my friend the two hundred dollars for two weeks work. Who found that him and his friend found the the, the treasure the, what they call the Spanish, the lost Spanish treasure cave. He was working for him. He got paid two hundred dollars. I got paid two hundred dollars, and everybody happy. So they broke into a, an old mine up there. No, the the dog uh, the, the dog ran went into a tunnel. They went to save it. 
And when they went inside, there was a like a incline and then a flat and then like a wall. And on top of the wall was another flat roof, and it was a skeleton holding a wonder buster. Oh, and a, a ruby about that big, and another one was like a scribe on top of it, kind of shared in a desk. So, well, that was up here. Ah, not too far from here, you see. They went hiking from the cabin this way, but I don't know if they went that way or that way. Because when you, when, when you go hiking, you only got two choices. You're like, well, go that way, that way, because hiking. And two hours later is when I found out that uh, the, about the treasure. My friend come back for three years, disappeared. Then um, Rick went and asked me about the question about the, about the ruby, and I told him about my friend. And he said he don't know my friend, but he knew he knew my friend's friend. And then my friend's friend disappeared. So, so far, um, you know, Rick Wen is the, the last survivor. Look, you see it? You see, you see the rock? The red one? Yeah, wait, 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 you can tell me about that rock. I don't know, tell me. It's a river rock, don't belong here. Oh, you're right. It's rounded and everything else isn't. You're right. Yep, you're right. Yep. And that's why you need to pay attention. Someone here for you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hey, <laughs> thanks for the souvenir. Yeah, you know, that, that's why I, I find lots of things because I notice everything. I got people tell me that I got to equalize. Now, what it means, I don't know, but. That tell you that you don't come from here, they can come someplace else and drop here one way or the other. But that's why that we're here. That, take a good picture of, the, of this. Yeah, I got got one okay. of already. Yeah, that, that was uh, what that has used to live. Like I said, he was uh, in charge of everything. Bob Ward was his bodyguard and contractor. And Bob Ward make all the arrangements. And uh, thank God I, I bring my friend because I don't trust his friend. Two hours later, they told me the story about the about the, the skeletons and the red ruby. She, sure. asked me, she asked me how much you think I worth. I said, based on, on the dimension, what you're telling me, it'd be worth about $2 million back in 1985, 86. So you don't know what happened there to the blunderbuss, to the skeleton? As far as, far as I know, they're still buried. So how long did you live out here for? From, from 85 to 91. Bob Ward, Bob Ward dies in, uh, Bob Ward died in 19, 19, uh, October 15, 1991. So you was here from 85 to 91? To 91, and Bob Ward died in, uh, on October 15, 91. So you tramps these hills all around here? Yeah, and since, since 82. Since, 80, 19, since March 17, 82, I've been tramping this hill. And you see that thing? Uh -huh. There's a depression there. Yep. How deep it goes, I don't know. Yep. Once you train your eye to follow things, you... Mm -hmm. You look for what's not natural, and that ain't natural. And you see the wood? They had wood around it, yep. Okay. Yep. And that's what... It's the, dug down right there, yeah. And like a sinking. Yep. Over here, the same thing, you see? You see? Mm -hmm. fresh. That's why you always look for what no not natural, and that's how you find things. Yeah, long stories, man. About this place. Yeah, I'll bet. Indian pottery. Save it for souvenir. Or, or, you don't want to give it to somebody at a camp. Yeah, give it to somebody at camp. You, you know. But uh, as you can see. Yeah, that's, like, like yeah it's, see. it's rounded on the... Yeah. You, yeah. It looked look like a rock to, uh, to, the, to, to most people, but as soon as I saw it, I knew there was not a rock. Because yep. I, I, you see, the black. And the, yep. Ross and Jerry. Yeah, that's pretty small. You got a good camera? Wait, wait, wait. Let me point. Oh. We go? Web go. For double B. W. W. E. B. B. Go. What does that mean? Weebo? We, uh, we go. We go. Web go. Web go. Web go. You see? Uh, talking about web go. Yeah. You don't know where, where to find it. You you can look forever and never find it. Yeah, it's small. So what does that mean? 
And who did it? Well, the story according to my war is that uh, in the 1800s, uh, the rabbit uh, gold ship uh, shipment from uh, Gulf Hill to Florence, they they got caught and they got shot. But before what they got that shot, they they all die. One of them told them to so say, find a cock to with the let his web go, and he got a uh, railroad spike going in the direction of the with a bird of the treasure. Bob, Bob found the cactus, found the nail, and he took the cactus, uh, the nail out of the cactus, and he lost the nail, and forgot to tell me where, which direction the nail pointed. But that's as I go back to the 1800s. Right there. Well, I, I can tell you what's right there, and I can tell you what's someplace else. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, you know, I, I just know, know that he never told me where the, where the, where the nail was. In which direction? Because if it was if it was here, they point in that way, was pointing to the Y. So it can point, yeah. You know, 180 degrees uh, either way. Pro probably would be. It could be 180 uh, off. Yeah. So you stick a stick in there. See which way it points. I'm saying. No, no, but my point. I want to. I want to show in a few minutes because this is something the dance needs to know, and it's close enough to the camp that you don't have to go through yeah. and everything like that. Yeah. And you have a locator, I believe that you got a locator to like long range locator, you yeah. can locate the treasure from here. Because this is your A point. This is your where your starting point. Yeah, yes, your yeah. A point, so you your B point could be in three hundred and sixty degrees. Anyway, I just wanna let you know. Thank you. Yeah, now we can go home because everybody everybody's gonna be going home. Yeah.